There are several things we need to think about in order to determine if a molecule is polar or not. One of the things we need to think about is the symmetry of the molecule. Now we need to think about symmetry as symmetry in all directions. So a symmetrical molecule would have identical atoms evenly distributed on all sides around a central atom. So although we might often think of symmetry as something bilateral like this tree here, um, it would actually, in the case of a molecule, we need something that's completely symmetrical all the way around. Now, some shapes are uh, sometimes symmetrical, linear, trigonal planar, and tetrahedral. So if we have the same atoms distributed all the way around, that can be a symmetrical shape. There's other shapes that are always asymmetrical or not symmetrical. So for instance, trigonal and pyramidal, and also the bent shape. Now trigonal and pyramidal would actually be like this. Um, this is showing the uh, electrons up there. Um, the bent shape like that of water, so the colors didn't show up on this uh, printout, but uh, the bent shape would just be this part. So that would be asymmetrical. Let's look at a few examples. So let's take water. And so water, even though it is symmetrical along one axis, it is symmetrical along this axis, it's not symmetrical in all directions. So for instance, if I uh, looked along this axis here, if I cut it like this and fold it over, it would no longer be symmetrical. So for our purposes in chemistry, we would consider, consider this to be asymmetrical um, because it's not symmetrical in all directions and it's not going to distribute the electrons evenly. CF4. So CF4, we have carbon surrounded by fluorines, which I'll represent with the green color. So in this case, this is symmetrical in all directions. So if I look at it this way, or if I look at it um, you know, this way, it's always, you cut it and you're gonna get the same thing. If you fold, fold it over, you still get the same thing. No matter which way I look at it, it always folds over. It's always symmetrical in all directions. Um, our main point here is does it distribute, does it distribute the um, polarity evenly? And so this would distribute it evenly. So we would think of this as symmetrical for our purposes in chemistry. Cl2, so in the case of Cl2, I have two chlorines. I'll represent that with the uh, purples here. So since this is going to distribute the, ele the electrons evenly, um, any electronegativity would be distributed evenly, and it is the same from all sides, uh, we're gonna consider that to be symmetrical. PH3, so I'm gonna use the blue of nitrogen to represent the phosphorus since it has a similar bonding pattern. In this case, we have a trigonal pyramidal shape. And so this shape is um, not going to distribute the electrons evenly. And so therefore, we would consider this one to be asymmetrical. CH3Br. So notice here, we have a similar shape to the last one. These are both tetrahedral in their shapes. And we said that tetrahedral can sometimes be uh, symmetrical. In this case, we would consider this to be symmetrical, but in this case, we wouldn't. And the reason why is because something is different on one side. We're gonna say that this orange here is the bromine and the white is the hydrogen. So if something is different on one side, that's gonna mess up the symmetry. Uh, there's a difference in the ele electronegativity here between the bromine and the carbon as compared to the hydrogens and the carbon. So that messes up the way the uh, electronegativity be, is distributed and it's no longer distributed evenly. C2H4, here's a, a model for that. And so for this one, we can see once again um, that the electrons are going to be distributed evenly. It's symmetrical along several axes and but the main idea here is, does it distribute everything evenly? And yes, this one would. So we would consider this one to be a symmetrical molecule 
for our kitchen here. 